What's up, you guys? So over here, we're going to be doing uh, integration B training for beginners. So the way I'm going to do this is it's kind of like an integral marathon, but not exactly. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to be splitting this into parts. Uh, pretty much, I'm going to be solving a set of integrals, so I'm kind of just walk throughing it. Uh, and then uh, pretty much it's... It's, it's technically just a walkthrough. So uh, the first thing, the first part we're going to be doing in this video is doing basic integration. And then after that, I'll be doing other parts, uh, which would be like use substitution, integration by parts, etc. So hopefully uh, this would be helpful for those who want to get into speed integration. So yeah, let's get started with basic integration. So the first integral, a good starter, is to at least knowing the basics of integration. And that's just simply a power rule. So in this integral, of course, it would be nice to sort of express this. And by algebra, we get 2x squared. Let's see, this is 8x plus x, that's 9x, and 4. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead. We just simply integrate this by power rule. So, of course, power rule, it's, uh, if you don't remember, it's x n plus 1 and dividing n plus 1. Okay, so you add 1 and divide that number uh, with it. So in this case, uh, we have this would be 3, so it would be 2x cubed over 3. Here, this would be square, so 9x squared over 2. And here, this is just 4x, so we could just, this is a constant. So we could just add it x, and then plus c. You're good to go. All right. Next one. It's, it's going to be a little bit trickier, a little more confusing, a little harder. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to assume that you're very comfortable uh, doing algebra. So if you're not very comfortable with algebra, you might, you might want to do that. Um, so here, uh, for easy, for just to make it easier for yourself, you can put this in exponential form. So you can go ahead and do, okay, this is 2 plus 1 half plus 3, that's 1 plus a half is like 3 halves, plus, and then 2 1 half. Okay, this 2 plus 1 half, that's like 5 halves? Yes. So, here this would be, so adding uh, 1 to 5 halves, that would be 7 over 2, 2 over 7. Plus five halves, two over five. So that's six over five. And then three halves. So that'll be two thirds. So that's going to be four thirds. Three halves. Plus C. Okay. Again. Uh, just expressing it uh, helps uh, since there's no pattern here. We just it, it would just be easy to just express it and then power rule. Okay, so basic basic integration. Okay, all right. Now, how about dealing with functions like this? So now here, uh, we we would split it. So we would split this split this in in a bunch of fractions. So here this would be one over x plus square root of x over x, and then plus x over x. Right. So in this case here, we we like to split this. We do this a lot, even in advanced uh, integrals. Like we do this a lot. So it's good. That whenever you see something like this, 
depending on what it is, right? I don't see any patterns uh, that I can do. So you should just you. It's just best to just split it up, and then this becomes power rule. Except this one. This one's not power rule. This is, if you remember, you should remember. Uh, this is ln of x, and then plus, and then this simplifies. Yeah, let me actually move it here. One over x. If we simplify it, it's one over square root of x. This one. This you could turn it into exponent if you want to, but this is one of these common. Uh, functions that you must memorize by heart. It's the, uh, the derivative of square root of x, right? This is 1 over 2 root x. So that means that the integral of this would be 2 square root of x. And then this here is just plus x plus c. And you're good to go. Okay. Okay. All right. How about how about this one? This is kind of like working with uh, a qualifying exam integrals from a from a high school or community college competition. So here, okay. Don't be bamboozled. This looks pretty. But this is just x squared plus 1. And this is a, uh, a standard integral that, that you should know. Uh, this, these are just power rules. So it's x cubed over 3 plus x. This, the integral of this is inverse tangent. It's inverse tangent of x plus c. And you're good to go. So that's, that's all it is. Just don't let that constant fool you. Okay, how about this one? One plus x of x squared. Okay, so uh, um, what do I do? This looks kind of funky. So, uh, so this if you again you be you have to be very comfortable with your algebra. So I'm assuming you're very comfortable with algebra. Uh, you can separate it. I would likely separate it so that it's x squared. Now I can go ahead and express the top. Express the top. Like I said, there's, I don't see any patterns. So I would just express the top. This is x squared plus 2x plus 1. Okay, And it's that same technique that I did, uh, splitting it in a bunch of terms. So this would be x squared square plus 2x x squared plus 1 over x squared. Okay. And then this is also one of those the derivatives that I showed where you must memorize by heart. 1 over x is equal to negative 1 over x squared. So that means that the integral of this would be negative 1 over x because the, the signs alternate. So, but first let's, let me, let me First, simplify this. Uh, so this would be 1 plus 2 over x plus 1 over x squared. So now this is equal to x plus 2 ln of x, 2 times ln of x, and then minus 1 over x plus c. There you go. It is also necessary to memorize these kind of uh, standard integrals. Okay, just, it's just I'm just giving you guys this just to help you remind yourself. Okay, secant square plus secant x tangent of x. Right, the integral of this is tangent of x, and the integral of this is secant x. Okay, that's those are standard integrals that you must have memorized. Okay. So again, just the basic integration, we're just expressing it. Okay. Now how about a little trickier? 
just a little bit trickier. 2x, 1 plus 5x. So 2 to the power of x, 1 plus 5 to the power of x, gx. This, this may look a bit odd, unusual. It's kind of like tripping your brain. But again, with some algebra, again, with some algebra, we just express it. Get 2x. Now, 2 to the power of x times 5 to the power of x. So what this is, is that it combines. The exponent combines it. Because they have the same exponent, you can combine it like this. This is only if you're multiplying. If you're adding, you cannot do that. But with multiplying, you can just absorb it. And this is equal to 10x. So this is 10x. A lot of the integrals that I need, I want you to memorize. Uh, so this is 2 to the, uh, let me erase that. 2 to the power of x, element of 2, plus 10 to the power of x, element of 10, plus c. And that's it. Okay. Next one. Again, I'm just going to throw this at you just as a reminder sake. Uh, more, uh, more standard integrals that you must know by, by heart. So, integral of e to the x, that's just e to the x. Integral of sine of x, okay, be very careful. The order goes like this. When you're deriving sine of x, okay, it's cosine of x. Deriving cosine of x becomes negative sine of x, okay. Then, for integration, for integration, when you're integrating sine of x, it becomes negative cosine of x because you're going backwards. You are going backwards. So, uh, again, deriving sine of x uh, is positive, positive cosine of x. Okay, deriving, deriving is positive. Integrating sine of x is negative cosine of x. Okay. Deriving positive, integrating negative. Uh, what's a better way to memorize this? Can't think of any. Um, I mean, mm, sine of x, deriving it. Um, it gives you positive computers. When you integrate it, you get negative. I don't know what I'm going with this. But uh, you, you get the idea. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, you, can, you, you might be able to formulate something to help you memorize it, uh, but yeah, that, that helps. So, this integral here, uh, oops, minus cosine of x plus c. Okay. Cool. Next integral. Negative 1. One and then one minus x squared dx. All right, we are about to get a little um, sneaky here. Okay, so this this is where I introduce you to some fun stuff. So, all right, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, express this, all right? Okay, so this is negative 1 to 1, x, I'm going to go ahead and express this first. So we get x squared minus 2x plus 1. Okay. And then multiplying x, this is x cubed minus 2x squared plus x dx. All right. Now time for the integration B trick. Okay. Whenever you have bounds like this, okay, that's that's kind of sus. Okay, negative a to a, it's it's kind of sus. There's something, there is something. If you have a function, 
if it's odd, actually, let me write it this way. If this is an odd function, okay, if you don't remember, an odd function is when you have negative x, it comes out as negative f of x. Okay, this is an odd function. If, if you have an odd function, this is equal to zero. And the reason is because of symmetry. It is symmetry, right? Let's say you have an odd function that goes like that, right? Of course, all the, all the negative values here add in a negative, like let's say, so this, is, this whole side is like positive x values. This other side is negative x values, right? You can go ahead, you, you see that all these values here will become switched. You see, everything is switched. This, this side is switched to this side by a negative value. So, uh, if I can undo that, this equals to zero. And uh, integration uh, is calculating by area. So, I mean, if you're, you know, let's say, go here from here, right? Or here from here, right? Again, negative A to A, right? This area, and this area here, and this is a positive area, this is a negative area, they cancel out. They just, they just equally cancel out. So, that is why uh, the odd function, the symmetry here is equal to zero. Okay? Now, if this... If this was an even function, that's a different story, okay, then it would be 2 times from 0 to a f of x. Now you're probably thinking, well, why is that necessary? Trust me, you would rather want that 0, and you'll, you'll see why. You'll see why later on, why I would prefer this 0. So we have an even function. To understand why this, this is, think of a parabola, right? So an even function is where you have neg uh, if you put in a negative value, it comes out the same as the positive value. So this negative x value is here, the positive x values are here, they're the same behavior, they're the same behavior. And so, let's say from, from negative a to a, right, both have the same area, both have the same area. So you just multiply by 2. From 0 to a. So that's why uh, we have this formula here. Okay, so 2 times is from 0 to a, the even function. Okay, all right. Cool, well, now that we have that, now that we learned that, let's apply that here. Okay, you'll see why I love this. It's a very amazing beginner trick. Here, this is an odd function, right? We have negative 1 to 1. Awesome! That means that this is an odd function, this is 0. This is an odd function, this is 0. Cool, my work is easier. And that's an even function. So, I can go 2 times 0 to 1, negative 2x squared. Right? I don't have to do all this work to integrate these other guys. I can just integrate this. Cool. And you'll also find out why I want this zero. You'll see why. Okay. So we have negative four. I'll put that, let's say, negative four as a constant. Awesome. So now we have negative four. Uh, this x squared, integrate that. That's x cubed over three from zero to one. Now, the reason why I want this zero is because. Whenever you have a polynomial answer, you can just ignore the zero. Uh, well, actually, no, I lied. Ooh, I should be careful. I shouldn't say polynomial. Uh, whenever you have a bunch of x's, like this, and you have zero, then you know, you clearly can see that if I plug in zero, it's going to be zero. Right? If I have to plug in negative one, then I have to do more calculations. So, and, and sometimes you are dealing with uh, integrals where it's like 2 to the power of, or sorry, 
negative from negative two to two, and then we would have to calculate from negative two, and that's more work. When you can just do when you can just do uh, zero to two, and then whenever you have like a polynomial like seven x to the power of five. You don't have to plug in negative 2, you can plug in 0, but you know it's very clear, you just plug in 0, everything's going to be 0, so you don't have to worry about this. The reason why I, I mentioned, uh, like, you can't, I can't say polynomial, uh, what I mean by that is, what if you have, um, I'm sorry, actually I lied, uh, a polynomial without a constant, right? You will never, you will never ever have a case where uh, your answer has a constant like this. Like no, <laughs> okay. You never come across this, and the reason is because if you derive this, derive this. What is this? This is zero, right? If I derive all this, this is this is zero, right? But I mean, are we are we gonna add? Are we gonna are we really like where where is this two coming from? Right, so you're never going to come across a constant like that. So technically, uh, the only polynomial you ever have in this indefinite integral box is just a polynomial without a constant. So again, so most most polynomials that you have in your answer box, whenever you have a zero, you know immediately. Oh, I can just ignore this. I can just ignore that because everything's just going to be zero. Cool, and and it really it really eases up your work. So it really eases up your work. So I don't have to plug in negative one. I could just I can just dive straight into plugging one. All right, uh, one third. That's I'm good to go. I'm done. Negative four thirds. And that's it. Okay. So a lot to take in. I get it. <laughs> just we just have to do it a couple. More times. Uh, again, it's just a lot of practice, a lot of experience. Uh, that's all it is. Okay. Cool. All right. Next is one from one to two. One over x squared minus four x cubed. Okay, so again, uh, for your comfortability, you can turn this into power rule. But I'm just I'm just gonna skip ahead. Uh, this is uh, two uh, two x squared minus one over x from one to two. Okay, uh, again, these are these are mostly from the uh, uh, functions to from derivatives and integrals that you must memorize by heart. Um, yeah, so you should you should get this, and then you can just plug in, plug in two and one. Okay, so the way I like to do it is I like to put mine in parentheses. Okay, I don't like writing it out without parentheses because when you do minus and then starting with one, like you'll you'll end up you you'll forget that you have to distribute the negative. So, parentheses, 2, let's see, 2, I get 1 half, minus a half, okay, so that's 0, minus, all right, and then plug in 1, I get 2, minus 1, okay, so this is 0, and I end up with negative 1, okay, so, I, I don't want, did I do this correctly? I think I did do this correctly. Um, okay. You can you can always have negative answers. So if you if you have a negative answer, don't freak out. That's that's normal. <laughs> okay. Even though most answers are positive, it's okay to have negative answers. Don't freak out. Okay. As as long as you did everything correct, uh, don't freak out. You can always have negative answers from integrals. Okay. It can be scary sometimes, though. 0 to 1. 
Let's do x cube root plus fourth root of x. Again, we will be doing putting this in exponential form. All right, so this is one third plus one fourth, and then we just multiply x. So this will give us, let's see, plus three, that's four thirds. Plus four, that's five fourths. I don't know why I wrote it that way. And then it's just power rule, right? I love this zero. So let's say plus three, because we're adding one. So plus three, that's x seven third, three sevenths, plus Say so five fourths plus one plus four. That's nine fourths. Four ninths, right? And I love zero ones when it comes to polynomials like this because plug in one, it's just it's just the coefficients, just the coefficients. Plug in zero, everything is zero, right? So this is this is all this is literally your answer, and you're you're good. You're good to go. Okay, cool. Uh, unless it's like Scranton University where you have to simplify, then I'm, I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> I am very terribly sorry. Okay. From 1 to 2, we have x over 2 minus 2 over x. Oh, shoot, this looks... This looks funky. This looks weird. No, it's just simple standard integral. It's just power rule and then ln of x. So, okay, so this is equal to x squared over 2 times 2, that's 4, minus 2 ln of x, and then plug in the bounds. All right, starting with 2, plug in 2, I get 4 divided by 4, that's 1. Minus uh, 2, that's 2 ln of 2. Okay. Minus plug in 1, we get 1 fourth. All right. Plug in ln of x, ln of 1. ln of 1 is equal to 0. Okay. ln of 1 is equal to 0. So we just have this. So our final answer is just 3 fourths minus ln of 4. I'm just going to put it like that. You can leave it as 2 ln of 2, but I'm just going to simplify it just because of laziness. Uh, but yeah, that's the answer. I guess I'll add this. Okay, standard integral, you know that this is secant of x. Okay. Now, if you're having a hard, if you're having a hard time uh, evaluating uh, non-standard trig functions, in your head you can mentally picture it as one over cosine of x, and then plug in, and then you can just go ahead and plug it in. Okay, uh, one fourth. That's that's like one over square root of two over two. And then minus, okay, plug in 0, that's 1, so that's minus 1. So then this is equal to square root of 2 minus 1. Okay? I don't know why I wrote it like this, but you could just reciprocate it. You could just reciprocate it. Okay? So that's, that's what I like to do mentally. Trust me, I, I have a hard time... Uh, evaluating this by heart, like I, I'm so used to cosines and sines and tangents, and then secant and cosecant. Like I have to like imagine the reciprocal of the of the trig function. Same technique, right? It's the same technique. Uh, you know, you split it. So we split it, right? We split this one over cosine squared. That's secant squared. Cool, we know what that is. Okay, again, we split this side. Let's see, cosine cubed over cosine squared. That simplifies into 
cosine of x dx. All right. So now we go ahead and plug it in. We know we know this uh, integral standard very simple standard integrals from 0 to pi over 4. All right, plugging in pi over 4, what do we get? That's a pi over, tangent of pi over 4, that's 1, plus plug in pi over 4 to sine, 2 over 2, minus plug in 0, they're all 0, tangent of 0, 0, sine of 0, 0. Cool. So our answer is just like that. Or you can again you can just leave it as root two over two. I just I'm just lazy, so I'm just wrote it like that. Next one, again, another reminder integral. One of these reminder stuff. Root three over two. I think did I write that correctly? Yes I did. Okay. So Another standard integral that you, sh you should know, uh, this is inverse sine, and then root 3 over 2, 0. Now, uh, I also have a hard time uh, computing this by heart, so I just think about, so in my head I just think about the unit circle. Sometimes I use my fingers, uh, but okay, let's see. Sine, so we're looking at, so we're mainly focusing on sine of x, right? Root 3 over 2, that's like a very high peak point, a high diagonal peak point, which is like right here. And right, this is root 3 over 2, so that means this is pi over 3, okay? And then uh, plugging in 0, inverse sine of 0 is just 0. So the answer is pi over 3. And that's it. So this, this is what I do in my head. Is just, I, just, I have to use the, the unit circle and just sort of land on where uh, root 3 over 2 is. And then if it was a half, then half is like, I know, okay, half is like the lowest peak. The highest peak is here. The lowest peak is here. And then the middle peak is root 2 over 2. That's, that's, that's just how I sort of think of it. If it was inverse cosine, then I focus on the x-axis. Okay. Uh, the highest peak is, sorry, the highest x value is here if it was root 3 over 2. And then the smallest x value here would be a half. Right? This is for like inverse cosine. So this, this is how I sort of imagine it in my head. Again, it just, a lot of practice really helps. So just, just practice a lot. And then you'll get used to it. Oh boy. All right. Now, here is where we start to really doing strategies here. Now, because I taught you splitting, uh, you might think, oh, we do it again. Splitting. Okay. Be careful. All right. We're, we're actually going to apply some algebra. We're treating this, treat it like it's like a limit, you know? want to simplify this as possible. So, now from 0 to 1 over 3, uh, 1 over root 3, okay, we factor this. We factor this. We know that this is, uh, I'm sorry, we know that this is factorable. The reason why I'm not factoring this top is because I know what this factor is to. It factors to x squared minus 1, x squared plus 1, and this cancels out. So what we have is actually dx x squared plus 1. So this is inverse tangent. Now the reason why I want to throw this at you is again another computational uh, another computational thing to do. So again if you're struggling, if you're struggling to compute this uh, inverse tangent of 1 over root 3. Think of it as sine of x, cosine of x. Okay, right. And then this, this 1 over root 3 is divide to both sides. Okay, well, sine of x, let's see, here, oops, I should probably write it like this. 
Let me write it like this. Okay, so we have here. Okay, uh, and then you can bring out your uh, unit circle. Okay, well, we want sine of x. We want sine of x to be a half. Okay, but we also want three. Uh, we want cosine of x to be positive root three over two, which is here. Right. Okay. Cool. So then this is pi over six. So this is equal to pi over six. Then inverse tangent of zero is just zero. Right. If this was negative, if this was negative, then I would be like, oh, okay. Then um, right. If let's say like if if it was negative, if this was negative, then focusing on this x-axis. I would be like, oh, but because this is negative root 3 over 2, I would have to go here where the, x, the negative x values are. So then this would be, this would actually be 5 pi over 6. Right? But in this case, we have 1 over root 3, which is positive. So our answer would be pi over 6. If this was, if it was negative, then the answer would be 5 pi over 6. But this, in this case, it's pi over 6. Basic pre-calc stuff. Um, Again, uh, you should be very comfortable with algebra and, and stuff. But I don't blame you. It's, it is a lot of practice. It's a lot of practice. All right. An absolute value. Huh. What do we do with this absolute value? What does this even mean? Right. You're probably thinking, oh, well, I mean, it's, it's an absolute, just an absolute value. Just dive right in. No, be careful. That's not what we do here. Okay, this is a completely different function than 2x minus 1, right? We'll have a function, let's say like, uh, I, I'm too lazy to graph, but uh, actually 2x minus 1 is like, I, I believe it's like this, right? But this is absolute value absolute value of uh, 2x minus 1. So in reality, it looks like this. And then the, the, the line that goes here, the line that goes here, gets deflected. It gets deflected because it's an absolute value. All the negative values becomes positive. OK? So our actual graph looks like this. Okay. So be very careful. Be careful. So how do we so how do we deal with absolute values like this? Well, what you do is you let 2x minus 1 equal to 0. So what I'm doing is I'm hunting down bounds that are negative. Okay. 2x equals 1 x equals one half. Aha, uh -huh. okay, so that's where I need to split my, my integral. And what I mean by that is I'm splitting the bounds. A zero, one half. Okay, zero, one half. Here, if I plug in, let's say, let's plug in one fourth, right? If I plug in one fourth, the reason why I'm plugging in one fourth is because it's that that number is between zero and a half. So these are like the domain. So plugging in one fourth, I get a negative value in general, right? If I plug in one fourth in two x minus one, I get a I get a uh, ignoring ignoring the absolute value, right? Ignoring the absolute value because our whole goal is to get rid of that absolute value. If I plug in x equal one fourth. This is going to be a negative number. Okay, so then in that case, this is the negative side. This is the negative side. So this integral is going to be 1 minus 2x. Okay, and then at half here, at 2, uh, then this would be positive. I, I mean, plug in 1, it's positive. Okay, so this is the positive side. Right. So that's how you deal with uh, integrals like this, right? If I had, conceptually, if I had another solution, 
then we, we would we would have to keep uh, bound splitting, right? Let's say like a or some number a, then I would have to split even more. Okay, half to a, and then a to two, and then you just keep on going, and then you have to keep plugging. You have to keep plugging a uh, some number between these bounds into here so that I know, okay, this is going to be uh, the negative version of this, or the, and then this is the positive version of this. Okay, so that's that's how we do it. Okay, so now we can go ahead and solve this. This is um, it's x minus x squared from 0 to a half. Plus, and then here, this is x squared minus x uh, from a half to 2. All right. Let's start here. We know 0 is 0, so we'll just dive into half. All right, half minus uh, half squared is 1 fourth. All right, plus, uh, plugging in 2, that's 4 minus 2, minus, plugging in half, 1 fourth, that's a half. All right, cool. So this is equal to. So this and this is technically the same, right? If I distribute the negative, it's it's it becomes this. So this is. So this is a half. I'm not half. I'm sorry. It's a one fourth. This is one fourth. This is two. So the answer is two plus one half. When when we add when we add it all up. It becomes 2 plus 1 half, and that's the answer. Cool. So that's how you deal with absolute values. Let's, let's practice another one. Um, let's get used to it. Negative 1 to 2, and then we have x minus 2 absolute value dx. Okay. Again, it's all about this x here, the, the absolute value. So, this is very simple. We know that, I mean, if it's negative, you know, we just, um, I'm sorry, not negative. x is equal to 0, x is, x is 0, right? You want, you let whatever this function inside the absolute value equal to 0. Okay, cool. So now we will split it to 0. Plug in uh, a negative uh, a negative number, right? I mean, uh, it's, of course, it's going to be negative. So, uh, be careful. This doesn't get affected. It's the x. It's the x. So, this absolute value becomes negative x, and then, so this would be plus 2x. Alright? And then, from 0 to 1, this becomes positive x, so we get x minus 2x. Okay, so be very careful. We're only affecting the absolute value, not the whole function. Okay, so be very careful. Be extremely careful. Now, we simplify it. So this is 3x. And then from 0 to 1, this is negative x dx. You see how there's a huge difference? So now, this becomes uh, 3x squared over 2, negative 1 to 0, plus uh, negative x squared over 2, 0 to 1. All right, plug in 0, it's, it's 0. All right, minus... Plug in negative 1, we get 3 halves. Okay, plus plug in 1, we get negative half. Okay, uh, minus plug in 0, this is 0. So, seems like we got our answer, negative 2. How about another absolute value? 0, 3 pi over 2. Hmm. You know what? I want to do something. Okay. 
Okay. Ah, yes. The beginner's, uh, the, the trap here. Uh, the beginner's foolish trap here. So, if you remember your trig identity, you know that sine square plus cosine square is equal to 1. You should already know that. But, sometimes I even fall, I even fall for this trap myself. So, some people would do, oh, okay, what's well, the sine square? This is equal to 3 pi over 2. This is sine of x dx. And then equals, and then you do your thing, and it's a, it's a, it's, it's a no-no. It's a big no-no. Um, what does this come out to? Uh, you would you would keep going and say like oh this is zero three pi over two oh this is like a negative uh, plug in three pi over two that's like what uh, zero okay zero minus uh, plug in zero negative one oh this is equal to one I'm good to no this is this is this is this is wrong this is wrong okay. The actual answer, so, I mean, this is, that's only true if it was indefinite. If this was indefinite, if this was indefinite, then yes, what you did was correct. Okay. However, we are dealing with a domain here. We are dealing with definite integrals here. So... Unfortunately, we're going to have to add an absolute value sine of x. Okay, I'm sorry, but we have to add the absolute value. When working with bounds like this, we have to add the absolute value. We just have to uh, because, I mean, it's, it's square root um, plus or minus. So... Alrighty, well, wh what do we do? Right, so, okay, well, it's in the absolute value, we know, okay, whatever is inside the absolute value, we need to find, we need to find the, the roots of it, All right? Sine of x is equal to zero, x is equal to zero, okay. But zero is right here. Well, my boy, this isn't the only root here, okay? There's, what, what else equals to zero? Uh, sine of x, if you plug in pi, that's 0. Plug in 2 pi, that's 0. Plug in, you know, etc. Whatever, uh, whatever pi, pi integer, whatever. Right. So that, those are all the roots of, of sine. Uh, do, we, do we have to do that here? Yes, because this is from 0 to 3 pi over 2. What we have here is when sine of x is equal to 0, we have x equals 0 to pi to whatever. But we're going to be using this. And the reason is because pi is inside. Pi is in this set here. Okay? And if you can't see that, pi is equal to 2 pi over 2. So it's definitely between here. Right, it's, it's definitely between 0 and 3 pi over 2, because it's 2 pi over 2. So, we have to split it in pi. Okay. We must split it in pi. Right. Why, why are we not adding 2 pi? Because 2 pi is equal to 4 pi over 2, and that's out of the, that's out of the bound. So we don't, we don't add that. We don't add those roots. Okay. All right, so splitting it, 0 to pi, um, plug in pi over 2, that's positive. Okay, so this is sine of x. Yes. From pi to 3 pi over 2, uh, plug in 3 pi over, not 3 pi, pi, plug in, so if you need to, pi is here. 3 pi over 2 is here, right? 
plug in somewhere here or whatever in this range. Oh well, it's it's very clear that we are we are at the we are at the negative y values. We are at the negative y values. So whatever we put in here in sine of x, it's going to be negative. So this is going to be negative sine of x dx. All right. Let's start computing. So this is, uh, oops, this is negative cosine of x, right? Because we're integrating sine of x, so integrating is negative. Why is it negative? Because not that many people like integrals because they're so hard. Uh, derivatives are easier than integrals, so that's why integrals, it's negative. So negative cosine of x, 0 to pi, plus a negative sine of x again, the, the signs alternate. So we have positive cosine of x, right? Well, you can think of it as like, okay, well, negative, negative here, uh, sine of x, negative cosine of x, the negative, negative, it becomes, it cancels out each other. But I'm just going to do it here because it's just faster to write. Okay. And we just we just evaluate. So cosine of pi, that's negative one, times negative, so that's one. Minus uh, plug in zero, that's one. Negative one. Plus, okay. Here plug in three pi over two, three pi over two, that's zero. Okay. Plug in pi. That's negative 1. Okay, oh, would you look at that? This is equal to 2 plus 1, 3. So the actual answer is not 1, it's not 1, it's 3. Okay, the answer is 3. Alright, so be very careful. Be extremely careful. Be very careful. It's this, this will... This is very evil. It's very cruel, but this this does show up in integration B. So uh, be very careful. Uh, you know, square roots uh, in with the uh, the bounds. Uh, you know, it's you you have to you have to use absolute values. Sometimes, if you're let's say like you do something, you end up with this. But it's like here, like from zero to some positive number. Then it's it's safe to just go like this, because I mean you got nothing negative here going on, so you could just you're 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 good to go. Let's throw this at you. Oof. Okay, expressing this, we get cosecant square plus cosecant x cotangent x. Okay, be very careful. Be very careful. The integral of this cosecant square negative cotangent x. All right, integrating cosecant x cotangent x negative cosecant x. Okay, don't forget about the negative. With cotangent cosecant, it's negative. Okay, it's negative. Signs alternate. Okay, we're almost done. We're almost done with some basic integration. Even though this kind of doesn't seem basic at all, this is this is an integration B level. So more absolute values. Again, you're you're free to try this on your own. All you have to do is just pause it and then you know do it yourself and then press play to see the solution. So okay, so this is an absolute value. This is inside the absolute value, which means that we must find the roots, the x-intercepts of it. Okay, so x is equal to negative 2 and 2. All right. Uh, there is, we're not at the negative range here, so we can just ignore negative 2. 2 is in between this uh, domain here. So, of course, we are going to have to split that up. 0 to 2. Uh, plug in 1, that's negative. From 2 to 3, uh, plug in, I mean, 
it's it's kind of obvious here, like right? it's just sort of you you know this is positive. So I was gonna say like two two halves, but like that's not that's not that's not in between. So um <laughs> So this this is x squared minus four. So this is this is the positive range. Okay, and then we can go ahead. All right, so here we have four x minus x cubed over three from zero to two. I'm just gonna write it sloppy. X cubed minus four x three to two. All right, let's go ahead and evaluate this. Plug in two. We get eight. Plug in two. Uh, sorry, two cube over three. That's eight over three. And then plug in zero. That's just gonna give us zero. So we could just we're good. Plug in three here. We have uh three to the power of three. That's twenty-seven divided by three. That's nine. Minus uh that's twelve. Okay. Minus plug in 2 here, this gives us 8 over 3, and then minus 8. Again, this is technically the same thing as this, because the negative is distributed. Uh, God. Honestly, I could leave my answer like this, but that would be very disrespectful. So, we're going to simplify this. Again, I'm multiplying 2 because this and this is the same thing. So, plus 9 minus, or, I mean, we could call this negative 3. Okay, so we have 16 minus 3, that's 13. 13 minus 8 over, ooh, be careful, it's not 8 over 3. I almost messed, I almost fucked up. So, it's 2 times we're, we're distributing. Okay, don't forget that. So, it's 2 times 8. 16 over 3. Those it's it's those sneaky mistakes that can really cost you. So don't be like me. Don't go too fast. Okay? <laughs> don't go too fast. Uh, take it easy, slow down a little bit, and then uh, you know, you 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 would rather be accurate. Well, you need to be accurate and fast at the same time. So those two things is, is good practice, you know. Don't be too fast, uh, but also don't be too slow. Um, you you want you want to be accurate at the same time. Okay. Um, next, our last one. It's another absolute value, uh, but it's okay. It's good practice because we need to get used to this. We need to get used to this because this this comes up a lot than what you would think. Okay. All right. So this is our last integral for basic integration. So, okay. Again, more roots. We need to find root. All right, so we'll screw x. 1. So x is equal to 1. Uh, 1 is definitely in between 0 and 4, so we do have to split it. 0 to 1. Uh, plug in a half. I mean, of course, it's 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 clear that square root of one half is smaller than one, so this is going to be negative for sure. And then one to four, right? Plug in two or three, it's it's definitely going to be positive. So that's that. I'm gonna write it sloppy again. X minus three halves thirds from 0 to 1 plus 2 thirds you have that's just a mirror version of this a mirror version so 1 4 all right let's evaluate this okay plug in 0 it's that's we know it's going to be 0 so we don't have to focus more on this so 1 that's just coefficients 1 minus 2 thirds is 1 third okay i love that one sometimes Plugging 4 in here, 4, square root of 4 is 2, 2 to the power of 3, that's 8, 8 times 2 is 16, and then divide by 3, plug in 4, minus 4, alright, and then minus 1, 
two thirds minus one, that's negative one third. Again, just like this here. So then we have two thirds plus 16, that's 18 over three. 18 over three is six. So we have six minus four, which equals two. Okay. And we're good. That's it. So that's all the basic integration. Cool. So we we should we should be quite comfortable with with the very good basics. So now in the next part, we will be doing U substitution. Uh, very. Um, is there a lot of is there forced substitution? No, not yet. Not yet. I don't think. I don't think these have forced substitutions. Uh, some integrals are a little bit off topic from U substitution, but uh, it's still it's still good to have as kind of like one of these reminder things like don't forget about the symmetry and stuff. So um, yeah, so on the next part we'll we'll mostly focus on U subs. All right, cool. So. Uh, I hope this is helpful. Uh, definitely keep sticking around. Uh, subscribe to get notified. And uh, stay safe. I'll see you guys in the next video.